Hello and welcome to our third installment of the Promax Asia webinar. Some of you will know today guest speaker from our 2018 Promax Asia conference in Singapore. We are very happy to have Neil Redemeyer, Vandal Executive Director in Creative Strategy and Innovation from Sydney, Australia. He's back today to show us some of the latest happening in the world of augmented reality. Now, should you have any question that you'd like to ask Neil, you can put it down in the Q&A section that is at the bottom of your Zoom window. Or I'll put the question that is already there and we'll take some of the question at the end. Right then, coming all the way from down under, over to you, Emil. Thank you very much, um, Andy. It is an absolute pleasure to be here today with you guys. Um, hello to my virtual audience out there. I'm very, very excited to talk to you guys today and um, show you some very, very exciting and interesting things. I'm going to switch over to my keynote presentation now and um, let's get started. As you've seen from the description of the webinar, um, today we're going to talk about the future, um, the future in creativity. And now I believe that the future in creativity lies in augmented reality. Well, let me introduce myself first. Um, my name is Emil Rademeyer, and um, I am very happy to say that when I was at school, I was the teacher's pet. Now, the teachers absolutely loved me. I was the guy that would carry their suitcase um, to the classroom and bring them a gift for their birthday. I was that really annoying kid that everybody loved to hate. Well, um, unfortunately, that affected me. And um, lo and behold, I, yeah, I, um, I unfortunately decided to, to join a gang. Um, this is my gang. This is my gang members. Um, I was a gangster. We were called the Cowboys, and that's me on the left-hand side there, the, the leader of the gang. And, um, you know, you kind of grow up and you grow out of these things, and I went into high school. But um, unfortunately, in high school, um, oh, sorry, but, uh, yeah, w what I wanted to say is when um, you, you do join a gang, unfortunately, you know, it's all about women and alcohol and drugs, and I don't recommend that to anyone. But I joined, uh, I went to high school and unfortunately I joined another gang and um, yeah, our signature move, our gang move was kind of to kind of walk around without our pants on at school and drink beer. And that's me there in, in the, the, the middle there with a circle around it. Didn't quite work out. Let's just say I grew up and um, yeah, I decided that... Um, when I grow up one day, I, I really wanted to be a hairdresser. I was really passionate about hair. And um, I went in for my first trial to showcase kind of what I can do. And yeah, that is unfortunately how it turned out. Um, I turned out with green hair and I knew that, well, hairdressing wasn't for me. And lo and behold, that is how I ended up here. Um, I'm Emil Rademeyer, Executive Director, Creative Strategy and Innovation here at Vandal in Sydney, Australia. A lot of people ask me, what is Vandal? What kind of company calls themselves Vandal? Well, to really distill it, Vandal is a creative studio that crafts media independent advertising, art, augmented reality, and immersive experiences. If you ever come to Sydney, please come and visit me. And this is our studio here. Uh, beautiful big warehouse in Redfern in Sydney. And um, if you look there on the right hand side, we only have one person at work for us. His name is Lucas. He sits there. And if you do ride a motorcycle, you can just ride straight in. You don't even need to park outside. Uh, you can just ride straight into your desk. Uh, luckily, we also have an art gallery in our foyer. It's really just a way for us to to showcase um, some of the creatives that we work with, um, art and photography and sculpture. It's a great way for us to welcome guests to our uh, studio space with a beautiful art gallery. Um, I would love to show you, just in a nutshell, what is the style of work that Vandal does, because it would lead into our presentation about how we can use augmented reality to be creative. 
This is our latest mixtape. It is our mixtape 2020. Let's have a look. I absolutely love what I do, and I'm very passionate to share that with you today. And um, like we've said before, today we are going to talk about creativity and um, our future in augmented reality. So let's have a quick look. What is it that we are going to talk about? Well, first and foremost, let's start at the basics. What is augmented reality? Number two, we're going to look at how can I use augmented reality in a greater fashion? Number three, we're going to look at a case study. And then number four, we're going to step into the future and see what the future of creativity and augmented reality is. So let's get started. Number one, what is augmented reality? Now, my parents told me that when you have a question, you have to ask somebody that wears a suit and that wear a tie. So I went and I asked somebody that wears a suit, and that wears a tie, what is augmented reality? It's true that we probably all agree that we live in a real world. But is there more to reality than what the human eye can see? Is there perhaps more than one reality? In fact, what is reality? Simply put, reality is a series of perceptions which we collectively confirm to be true. For example, I feel like I'm here standing still, but in fact, I'm zooming around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Our society calls this collection of distinct experiences reality. So, what is augmented reality? It's not about twisting, or twisting elements we recognize as real, nor is it about shifting what our eyes can see or enlarging the size of things around you. Augmented reality is a digital layer superimposed over our direct environment. The perfect symbiosis of virtual and analog. We now perceive more than the eye can see. Take this image, for example. Through the augmented reality spectrum, it might reveal something completely new and unexpected. Augmented reality is the fusion of real and digital. 
its possibilities are endless. It allows you to plunge into this new world, a world you have created based on your personal needs, interests, and fantasies. A useful and engaging experience with endless outcomes. Reality is more than it used to be. What was once surreal is now technology. So open your mind to the infinite capabilities of our collective imaginations. Welcome to the new world of augmented reality. That guy's pretty smart. So what did he say? What is augmented reality? Well, it's really a changed reality. It is the physical world that we have on the one side. And then, you know, only, let's say, 20 or 30 years ago, this whole new world came forth. And that's a digital world. What's been happening over the last 10 years is, in my opinion at least, that the digital world is starting to overshadow, to become bigger than the physical world. Now, what happens if we look at our physical world through the lens of our digital world? Well, we see a new reality. And this new reality is a changed reality. And that is augmented reality. All that augmented means is changed, a changed reality and augmented reality. So why augmented reality? What's wrong with just good old normal reality? Well, like I've said to you before, I think we live in a digital world. You might think it is all about the physicality and the physical world, but if you do track your movements on a day-to-day -day basis, I think we are actually living in a digital world. Why am I saying that? I love a stat and I've used these stats before and I will use it again, but they say, the average person spends six hours a day online. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm clearly not the average kind of person because usually I'm online um, eight to 10 hours a day. Um, before and after, I would check Facebook, um, Instagram. I would watch on Netflix. So I would say I am probably online at least 20, maybe 18 hours a day, which really means I'm actually more online in the digital world than I'm offline in the physical world. Think about that a bit. Number two, humans will spend a total of one billion years online this year alone. One billion years this year alone. And how do we do it? Well, we do it in three second increments. Every project that you do, every promo you make, every ad that you make, you have three seconds to capture somebody's attention. If you don't capture their attention in three seconds, they're off, they look at their phone, they walk away, they scroll their feed up. It is so important to capture people's imagination, capture their attention with your creativity in the first three seconds of your product.
the amazing thing about digital technology is that it can really be implemented in every aspect of our lives. It's not just on your computer. It is not just on your phone, but you can really add this digital layer onto any physical object that is out there. So let's recap. What is augmented reality? It augments the physical world with digital content. It combines the physical and the digital world and creates a new changed reality. And this new changed reality is what we call an augmented reality. All right, now that we know what is augmented reality, let's look at number two. So how can you use augmented reality in a creative fashion in the day-to-day -day job or hobby that you do? Let's have a look. I think it's very important to note that there's no boundaries to creativity and there's no boundaries to augmented reality. Augmented reality or creativity, it's not about a specific place. Um, it's not about a specific location either. And it's definitely not about just having to use the latest and greatest technology. Augmented reality is about being creative. Augmented reality is about changing the human experience. Isn't that why we do anything, any creative product? When you create a work of art, it is to change somebody's experience when they view it. When you create a promo, it is about changing somebody's viewing habits. You want to convince them to watch that show. If you create an ad for a product or a service, you want to convince people, even before they've tried it, to use that product or to use that service. And we do it by being creative. So how do we use augmented reality to change the human experience in a creative fashion? Let's look at a couple of examples. Number one, let's look at how we can use creativity and augmented reality in advertising. great is that we all see ads plastered everywhere in the bus stop in the train station but how about when your ad actually responds to your physical environment as the train comes in the hair blows I think it's a fantastic showcase of um, creativity in terms of uh, advertisement and how it can respond to the physical world the digital content responds to the physical world Let's look at number two, art. Now, we had our humble Vandal Art Gallery that's in our foyer here that I showed you. I want to show you one of my favorite artists. His name is Rafik Anadol, and this is a building, the Salesforce building in San Francisco. And in the lobby of the Salesforce building, there's a ginormous digital screen wrapped around the corner. What Rafik Anadol has done here is rather than just a painting or a sculpture within this lobby of this building, he created a living, breathing work of art. The work of art never stops, it never stands still, and it pulls its data from the environment. It pulls its data from the weather pattern of San Francisco. It pulls its data from the the traffic in San Francisco. It pulls its data from uh, the Twitter feeds um, uh, within the surrounding area. And by taking all that data, it then generates this algorithmic artwork that is constantly morphing and changing based on what is actually happening in the physical world. I think it's so important that whatever we do creatively, it has to sit in context you can't just do something and just plonk it anywhere 
it has to make sense. It has to respond to the environment. It has to be relevant. I think this is a great idea to make a work of art that lives and breathes, not just a normal living and breathing, but the living and breathing of its precinct, of its environment, and in this case, San Francisco. Beautiful. Now let's have a bit of a look at how we can change the human experience in our built environment. I'm going to use another office lobby. Uh, we all work and we all work at places. And I thought, how fantastic is this? Rather than just painting the wall or putting wallpaper on the wall, they've got digital screens on the wall that actually responds to people's movement. As that gentleman walks through the hallway, the whole building responds to the movement. It's not just irrelevant artwork that is on there, but as people walk past the building, the building recognizes that you are there and it responds to your movement and your presence. And then lastly, shopping. How can augmented reality change our human experience with shopping? Well, I'll show you a little project that we did here in Vandal. And um, to give you a bit of context, um, in the good old days, we had trams here in Sydney. And this is an old photo from them olden days of um, the, tram, the, the tram sheds that used to be here in Sydney. What has happened unfortunately over time is um, they pulled the trams, tram railways out and they put cars on the road. And this beautiful precinct where they housed all the trams um, started to get vandalized. So artwork, sorry, artists from all over the world came and they started painting on top of the disused trams that are there. It became quite a thing internationally. Um, some very well-known artists travel from abroad to be able to come and um, paint, um, spray paint graffiti inside this precinct on top of the trams. Um, a couple of years later, uh, a developer bought the old tram sheds and they created it into a dining precinct. Beautiful restaurants in there. But unfortunately, all the history that was there, all that beautiful graffiti artwork was washed away with the new development. And the client came to us and said, they really want to bring to life the graffiti and the artwork that used to be in the precinct. They wanted to use augmented reality to showcase the artwork and the graffiti that used to be in that tram sheds.
I love that project. It's one, is one of my favorite projects to really um, bring to life or uncover what used to be there um, and bring it to life by means of augmented reality. So let's recap quickly. Uh, augmented reality is not about location or place or having the latest technology. It's about creativity and to apply that creativity to change the human experience. Now, let's look at a case study. If you were at Pro Max Asia in Singapore in 2018, you would have remembered that I showcased a project um, that we did in augmented reality that was for Lunar New Year 2018. If this rings a bell to you, um, you might remember it, a beautiful dragon sculpture that we brought to life in augmented reality. Uh, just to recap and refresh your mind, um, if you remember it or you're not familiar with it, um, the brief from our client was um, to activate their precinct for Sydney Lunar New Year. Um, you might not know, but uh, Lunar New Year in Sydney is the biggest in the world outside of mainland China. Um, our client wanted to position their shopping precinct called World Square as the premier retailer uh, for Lunar New Year 2018. And ultimately, what did they want to achieve? Well, they wanted to bring more people to the precinct and they wanted people to shop at the precinct. So increased traffic and sales. Key considerations was had to be in it, innovative, had to integrate with social media and it had to generate lots of publicity. We came up with an augmented reality campaign. Um, what we did is we brought to life a beautiful physical sculpture in the precinct. Uh, they've got a big um, dragon sculpture in the precinct and we brought that to life by means of augmented reality. Uh, we further created an augmented reality treasure hunt. You can use your mobile phone and you can unlock a special discount offers at the shops and um, you can then enter a competition by taking a selfie with the augmented reality dragon. And then lastly, we created a live augmented reality experience where on the big screen in the precinct, you can touch and interact with the augmented reality dragon. Um, it was a really successful campaign. And if you remember it, uh, people absolutely loved it. And I want to show you what we did in 2019. Um, at the end of the campaign of 2018, the client kind of came back to us and they asked, you know, was it innovative? And luckily, and I'll quote from the articles, in an Australian first brand new technology was used never before implemented to the scale in Australia. Did it integrate with social media? Yes, it did. We managed to get a reach of 1 million on social media, 1 million people, not sponsored posts, just organic posts. And um, lastly, did it generate publicity? Now, you might remember this guy. Who is this guy? I don't know who this guy was, so I had to ask somebody really young and really cool to tell me who this guy was. And this guy was called Little Uzi Vert. A little Uzi Vert just so happened to come and um, visit World Square, and uh, he saw himself on the big screen interacting with the augmented reality dragon, and he posted on Instagram to 6.4 million people his experience at the shopping precinct. Now, when is the last time that a seemingly very famous international hip hop star tweets or posts about a shopping center? Well, it's possible with creativity and using creativity in a really interesting way. Did it increase traffic and sales? Oh yes, our client was happy. Um, 15% more people than the year before and sales went up 8%. High fives all around, let's pop the champagne. But let's look at Lunar New Year 2019. And um, you know, it's always hard to kind of outdo something that you've done really well. It's almost like that, uh, the, the sequel to a movie that was really good. There's a lot of pressure on it. And um, we received the brief from the client and the only thing that the brief said was this, outperform last year's campaign. No pressure. So uh, we came up with a little idea. Well, to be honest, the idea was not so little. 
And being here of the peak in 2019, we came up with a three not so little peaks. Now, I know you guys are all the way across the world and I'm down here in Sydney, Australia, but I want you to put your hand together and I want you to cheer as loud as you can as I introduce our first pick to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you pick number one, Funky. Isn't that the funkiest pick you've ever seen in your life? Ladies and gentlemen, pick number two. Chunky. Isn't that the chunkiest pick you've ever seen? At last, but definitely not the least. Pick number three. Chunky. The good looking one. tell anyone because it's actually the same pick three times but um, uh, please don't tell anyone so how did it work um, basically we designed these pick characters for here of the pick and uh, because of the success of last time with augmented reality we decided again that we would use this medium of augmented reality to explore bringing these picks to life for the shopping precinct we created a three-part campaign for them. Number one is we created an augmented reality scratch and win. If you guys are familiar with the scratch, it's a ticket you buy at the news agent, you scratch it, and if you match three symbols, you win a prize. Number two is we did a traditional physical activation for them. And then number three is an augmented reality peak boogie. Yes, you heard right. Um, I've always wanted to dance with a pig, and um, this was the chance for me to be able to dance with a pig. So let's look at number one, augmented reality, a digital wallet scratch and win. What we created was a uh, app, but not an app. You didn't have to download it. Uh, you can just activate it by scanning a QR code that would create an augmented reality digital wallet for yourself. How it worked is you would scan a marker within the precinct uh, that would then present you with a special offer at that particular shop. Um, you can keep it in your digital wallet and go redeem your special offers. And then if you scan eight markers, you get issued with a scratchy. Um, scratch that scratchy on your mobile phone just by sc scratching the glass. And um, if it is your lucky day, you go into the draw for a daily prize. People absolutely loved it. They came back day after day. It was really successful. Number two, a physical 3D printed sculptures of the pigs. We got the sizing completely wrong. They were supposed to be way smaller like this. But as you can see from the sculptures, they came out ginormous, which was actually a good thing because people loved it. They uh, loved interacting with the pigs, uh, touching their bottoms, pulling their tails, and really uh, mimicking the, the, the quirky poses that our three hunky, chunky, and funky pigs uh, performed in the precinct. And then lastly, the act that you were waiting for, the augmented reality pig boogie, because we all wanted to dance with a pig in our life. Now, basically, similar to last time, uh, the precinct has a digital screen within their uh, square, the world square. And usually on that screen is advertising. But for Lunar New Year, we did a takeover of the screen. If you look underneath the screen, um, there's like a little black box. Uh, we installed a camera there. Now that camera allowed us to um, put a live feed on the screen. And then by means of augmented reality, we would superimpose the pigs um, over it. And yeah, the idea was kind of, you know, people come in and they challenge the pigs and um, you can challenge them to a dance. But yeah, I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work because I really want to dance with pigs, but um, I wasn't sure if other people wanted to dance with pigs as well. So it was the big launch day and we switched it all on and yeah, there was only a couple of people there. They kind of stood around and they didn't really get into it. So um, I started to get worried. Uh, more people came. 
started kind of look, but no one really started to dance. And then suddenly a couple of kids, it must have been a school group, they came along and yeah, they got into it. They started dancing. And then people started taking videos and photos of the kids dancing. And then people started taking photos of the people taking photos of the kids dancing. And then people came to start to take photos of the people taking photos of the people taking photos of the kids dancing. And then even more people come to take photos of the people taking photos of the people taking photos of the people taking photos of the kids dancing. And then suddenly we had a security issue on hand because there was literally thousands of people looking at people challenging the pigs to boogie and to dance. It was really, really fun and people absolutely love it. Let's have a look at a quick video. Now down to business, did it outperform last year's campaign? Let's have a look, 2018, the dragon, 2019, the three not so little pigs. Um, last year, sorry, 2018, there was 5,352 scans of the retail vouchers. For the pigs, ta-da, up 153%, high fives all around. Social media. Uh, the time before, we had 1 million reach of social media. This time, yes, you read right. The Three Little Pigs was the number one search item in 445 million users in Sino Weibo during Lunar New Year. But more than that, it was in the top 10 hashtags in the world Take that, Kim Kardashian. Take that, Tom Cruise. Take that, Oprah Winfrey. Take that, Yeezy Shoes. The three little pics is in the house. Single post publicity. We had our big hip-hop rap star, Little Uzi Vert, last time, um, shouting out to his 6.4 million followers, who was just the biggest single post publicity. This time, just a normal person, 10.8 million reach of one post on social media. Not sponsored, just an organic post. And then lastly, traffic and sales, 15 and 8% the year before, this time up 26% on top of the 15% and 3.1% sales on top of the 8% last year. High fives all around, PR reach 8.6 million, PR value $1.5 million, Everyone was happy. And I think it's a great example to show how you can put creativity in action using augmented reality. Now, let's wrap up. We looked at uh, what augmented reality is. We looked at how we can use it creatively. We looked at a case study. So let's look at the future. And I'll leave you with this question. And it's really, how will your future look in augmented reality. Will it look like this? You blocked me on Facebook, and now you're going to get f***ed off. Will it look like this? Would it just be advertising plastered in every public space. Everywhere you go, you are surrounded by augmented reality messages and 
stats and interaction and discounts and special offers and do this and do that. Is that how our future will look like? Will it look like this? Is this maybe how your personal space, the inside of your home, your kitchen will look like? Is brands going to start sponsoring your dishwasher? Are they going to start sponsoring your kettle, um, your mug, your fridge? And um, will we be surrounded by brands plonked on top of our world by means of augmented reality? Or will it be artificial intelligence? We've all heard about artificial intelligence. Well, you still need to input data in order for the artificial intelligence to come to a conclusion. If you are going to put in dogs into your artificial intelligent world, you will get dogs in the result. And it's really a dystopian future that could be created here. How will your future look in augmented reality? I'm going to sign off and I'm going to say it's up to you. You guys, you girls, you are the future of our world. Um, it's up to you to use your creativity and not just sculpt the physical world, but also sculpt the digital world. It's up to you in how our world in augmented reality will look like. No one else is going to control it except us, except you. Let's use our creativity and make it a better place, a place that is creative and a place that enhance human interaction. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you haven't fallen asleep. I hope anyone is out there. I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go back to Andy. Thanks so much. Thank you, Tim. So we'll do a quick Q&A. Um, it doesn't seem like we, we have any question yet. Um, so attendees, if you have any question that you'd like to ask uh, Emil, please, you can take a quick minute and uh, put it down at our Q&A section. In the meantime, uh, I think Rajika might have a question for you. For you, Rajika? Hi, Emil. I think you've just blown us away with this beautiful reality. I'm just glad somebody's there on the other side. I was getting nervous. I'm talking to myself there. <laughs> okay, here's a question from Ekta. She asks, what is the difference between augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality? Yeah, that's a great question, Rajika. Um, people often mix up these technology terms, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, mixed reality, and they are actually quite different. Um, I'll start with virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you put a headset on your head. It's um, like the Oculus Rift. You put a headset on your, on your um, head and you basically uh, get transported to a new world. Um, you're not part of the physical world, but you get transported to a new world. With augmented reality, like those examples that we've seen now, you're still in your physical world, but we just add digital content to the physical world. And then lastly, mixed reality was like that um, dancing with the pigs or interacting with the dragon on the big digital screen. It's where we kind of blend these worlds together between a mix of augmented and a mix of um, real reality. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Uh, we've got a question from Kunal Seth, and he says, what software do you use to create these graphics? Yeah, um, that's a, uh, a great question. Well, to be honest with you, it starts with the humble. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> uh, there. There you go. <laughs> a humble pen and paper. It starts with a creative idea. Once you have the creative idea, go into the normal stock standard tools, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc., And then you go into the more juicy tools. I mean, there's lots of different tools. Um, we use uh, Spark AR for Instagram. We use um, Unreal Engine for some of the interactive content. We use Unity for some of the interactive content. If you are a gamer on um, Xbox or PlayStation, if you do play Fortnite, um, Fortnite is done 
in the Unreal Engine. And um, if you are a nerd like me, you would have seen they've um, just released Unreal Engine number four, which is basically a, uh, a system in which you can generate real real time content. Um, we use a lot of different packages, and um, those are just a couple of the ones that we use. Unreal Engine, Unity, Spark AR, Photoshop, all the way down to a pen and paper. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, there's another question from Rahul. All the questions are coming in now. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to implement AR for music marketing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I kind of use this term AR, augmented reality, very loosely. You know, people get very technical about it and go, oh, augmented reality is only this. But I really use it as a term of how can we change physical reality with digital technology? Um, I think it was two or three weeks ago. Are you guys aware of um, the... What is the singing contest that's every year? Eurovision. I don't know if you guys follow Eurovision. Yeah. Basically, Eurovision had to be cancelled um, this year due to COVID restrictions. And what they did is they did a call out for artificial intelligence to create this year's Eurovision top song. So they um, submitted to studios and artists all around the world and they wanted them to submit a song that is generated by means of um, artificial intelligence. Different countries participated and actually a studio just around the corner here from us called Uncanny Valley submitted their um, artificial intelligence song and they actually won Eurovision this year. Um, if there is a way for me later to, to um, publish a link, um, Raul, I can certainly post you that link of how they created um, that artificial intelligence song that they made up. In terms of augmented reality, you can, in the same way that you can add um, images to the virtual world, you can certainly add sounds to the physical world as well. So I would say, yes, there is lots of ways that you can use augmented reality for music marketing. Thank you. Wow. Uh, and this possibility, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I mean, so much you can do. Okay, there's a question from Liana asking, what are the possibilities with AR and the advent with 5G? Yeah, that, that's a great question, Liana. Um, there's really one thing that has held this technology back, and that is uh, bandwidth. Um, everything that we've done since the dawn of internet was to get file sizes small. And when you compress images, they start to look crappy. But if you basically have unlimited bandwidth, the fidelity and the quality of the world that you can create really is on par with what you see with your human eye. And that's actually a very scary thing that in the future, by having 5G available and just the amount of bandwidth that is available to us, where will we draw the distinction between what is real and what is augmented? Um, it's a big question out there and um, there's a lot of people that's for 5G and there's certainly a lot of people and conspiracy theories that's against 5G. But I really think that 5G is going to be one of the turning points for digital technology and augmented reality that really allow us to implement any scale sized experience um, that is really going to change, I think, the way that we perceive our world in the next decade. Fantastic question. Thank you. Okay, there's Lani from Hong Kong. And she asks, what is the last Dancing Pigs marketing campaign? Uh, how much is it for cost, creativity cost for the campaign in USD? Yeah, that's probably the number one question that I get asked for the campaign. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to say what the budget was for that particular campaign. What I, do, what I can say is for our client, that is their um, premium um, campaign for the year. They do absolutely no spending for Christmas so that they can combine their Christmas budget and their Lunar New Year budget um, for this campaign. 
further to that, um, there was three components to it. There was the sculptures, there was the scratchy experience, there was the dance, there was ultimately designing and creating the pig characters. So I won't lie to you, it's probably uh, one of the projects that's got a larger budget than some of our other projects. Um, but um, unfortunately, I'm not able to give the exact figure. I hope I was able to answer that question without answering that question. I'm sure Lanny will understand. Uh, Tim asks, what would your dream project be? Um, good to hear from you. Um, you know what? My dream project is probably a brief that everyone else will reject. You know, if you think about a brief, please bring pigs to life for a shopping center. At first glance, you can say, you know, that is really not the ultimate brief. You know, the, the client is not Nike or the client isn't Reebok or Yeezy shoes. It's just a humble shopping center. I really believe that the dream brief is that you can create something absolutely amazing from the simplest of brief. And I think that is the challenge for us as creatives. Don't wait for the dream brief. Create the dream result from an ordinary brief. And I think that is the dream project for me, to take something that's really ordinary and run of the mill and just let your creativity flow and blow your creative director away, blow your client away, blow the world away. Because there's only one person that can make that happen and that is yourself. There's only one person that can make it not happen, and that's yourself as well. Thank you. Excellent. Do we have time for one or two more questions? I'm fine. It's up to you guys. Uh, I think we are uh, good with that. Asking, okay, why don't we make it a last question? Okay. He's asking, is there any major technical challenges that you face when you do these um, virtual reality stuff? Yeah. Um, Oh, there's always a technical challenge. You know, we we work with um, computers and whenever you work with computers, it doesn't want to start or it did work and it worked last time and now we're showing the client and it didn't work. So yes, there's always a technical connection. Uh, sorry, there's always technical troubles. Um, it really boils down to the simplest of thing and it's basically that point A is not communicating with point B. Um, that can be a drop in signal or it can be the code that is not um, written properly or something falls off the radar. Um, it really boils down to the simplest solution, but yeah, it can be very, very frustrating and time consuming just to find out that um, the power cable wasn't plugged in or the internet connection was offline. So yes, it's always a problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emil. It was really a pleasure listening to you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rika. Thank you, Emil. And thank you, audience, for being here with us today. Now, we hope you enjoy, uh, you enjoy this week's webinar. If you have any question, any suggestion or comment on how we can be better, you can email to us at webinar at promaxasia.tv. Okay, that's webinar at promaxasia.tv. Do join us again next time.